good evening. I'd like to open the meeting of the February 11th, 2015 Planning Board. Um, we have a brief agenda tonight. First, we start off with uh, public comment. Um, we are looking at an empty house, so I think there's none. Um, we uh, have on our agenda to discuss uh, proposed changes to site plan review. Uh, would you like to do that first, or do you want to do the business as as extra? Um, I, it's fine. Now that Dan's here, we can start. Jump right in. Uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, do you want to do site plan? I want to do site plan, and I'd, I'd, if you would indulge us, I'd like to start with, it's been a while, sort of what was the purpose of this? What were we trying to do with the changes that you put in to get from uh, uh, intermediate to uh, administrative? So um, I guess we probably talked about this a couple meetings ago. Uh, I also have extra printed copies if anybody wants one. It's the same? Yes. Okay. Same as the I've second. Um, so, uh, double sided. You need more? So the yeah. idea was to think about, um, well, this is following on the heels of the consultant's report about um, infill development. They looked at um, downtown neighborhoods and sort of the impediments to encouraging um, projects and one of the things was looking at the one of the aspects is looking at the regulatory structure and also the existing zoning and permitting so um, uh, we, we had talked as a, as a city as a board and staff several years ago about thinking about bringing some of the projects that were really technical and could be um, pretty straightforward staff reviews and at the time that was going back I think six years now there was a little bit of concern about pulling that away from the public um, um, hearing process and so just following up on the latest consultants report we felt um, like they again sort of reiterated that uh, site plan review can be burdensome particularly to smaller um, developers or um, project proponents um, of, of smaller scale projects and um, so and had recommended that we adjust some of these public hearing processes in order to um, provide uh, more sort of uh, facilitate development um, approvals so we took that opportunity to go through the entire site plan section and look at and based on their recommendation that maybe the, our threshold for site plan was really low so 2,000 square foot um, construction even though it's by right in certain districts let's say to build a two family if you're doing you know two units of 1,100 square feet each it's by right but all of a sudden then you have to go in front of the planning board so um, <coughs> on the one hand we're saying we want to encourage these smaller projects but on the other hand we're putting another um, 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 gate sort of in between um, getting to that point so um, they recommend that we increase the threshold of, of review and sort of the or the intermediate step was still have a review but do it at a staff level that has less um, that's more expedient in that the timing um, is reduced in terms of getting in front of um, staff but the notification to the abutters would still happen just in a sort of an accelerated timeline as opposed to the statutory timeline that we fall back on for site plan where we have to advertise in the Gazette for two weeks and notify the abutters and then there's a 20 day appeal period after it. So that extends it a good three months anyway for anyone coming into the public hearing process that's now established. Um, so instead of having what we've been calling for decades intermediate site plan that kicks in at 2,000 square feet and then major site plan that's at 5,000 square feet just sort of adjust that and say there's either a staff level review site plan which we're calling administrative site plan or planning board site plan which would kick in at 5,000 square feet and based on that initial conversation that we had a couple of meetings ago um, instead of right now adjusting those threshold numbers just stick with the 2,000 and 5,000 as a starting point and see how that goes so mm -hmm. this draft mm -hmm. goes back to the existing thresholds of 2,000 and 5,000 but adds everything else in 
to it. You were talking about raising that upper limit to like 7,500 or something like that. Um, but we kept it at 5,000, which I was a proponent of. Yeah. How often in the past or now do we have a conflict between a, um, a by right development that's up against the 2,000 square foot minimum that triggers the automatic site plan? Does that happen a lot or it just it can happen the way the, the zoning's written? Um. Well, it, it most likely would happen with a construction on the housing side, to, you know, two family or three family um, is where it happens um, more frequently. I'm trying to think of the last um, residential project you looked at that was a smaller scale one, but the, there are other thresholds that are site plan review anyway that, um, aren't 5,000 square feet, but let's say the, the common driveway site plan or um, um, side lot access um, site plan. So there are other things that um, normally we allow by right, but in the, in the table, there's a checkbox under planning board. So that's the other proposal in here is to take some of those that are sort of the minor projects that aren't necessarily a square footage trigger, but um, another kind of trigger and put that into administrative review too. So I'd say, um, I don't know, maybe maybe up to 50% of the oh, really? projects that come forward. So um, I can think like, for instance, the, the house on Cons and Fruit Street that got built. That mm -hmm. one I imagine is over uh -huh. 2,000 square feet. Yeah. And it, I think everything else on that lot looked like it was by right, except possibly there was a shared driveway or something. Right. Um, what about the Pomeroy Terrace project that we looked at? That's um, multi-unit. That was a oh, uh, Pomeroy Terrace. Um, With the driveway dispute. That's Phillips, right? Oh, Phillips Place. Yeah, yes, yes. I'm sorry, um, thank yes. you, Phillips Place. Uh, I started to think about Shaw. I was like, wait, wait, that hasn't come I know, I know. Um, no, that's okay. So um, that is still... So that came forward because it was m more than one structure on a parcel. Okay. That would still come to the planning board. Those are the that's the one that's one of the ones that because that's a new change in the ordinance, we'd still have that as a planning board review. I, I think I bring up those two because it's important to me that I don't think the first example gave us any trouble or gave the neighbors any trouble, and I think that was fine. The second one, I think the city would want us to have a public meeting and and do all of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's why I put those two. I can't yeah. think of any others. As I, was, I was wondering if, if we, if there was like another intermediate, not to make it, to make it less cumbersome, if, if something was allowed by right and the way it's set up now, it also triggers a site plan, that seems redundant and not required. And that could go to staff review. And so like the allowed by right would trump anything else. So if it's allowed by right, you don't need to go to planning board, staff review, keep moving. But if you go over 5,000 square feet, that's an automatic site plan trigger. And then maybe that, I don't know, that, that I guess that 2,000 square foot might be a trigger if it's not allowed by right. It just seems, <coughs> well, be. And I guess, I think I'm having similar, the 2,000 square feet, I, I don't know. I, and maybe that's where you're going with your question. Like, what's that actually capturing? Right, because to, to Carolyn's example of, uh, you know, two relatively small houses allowed by right on the, we shouldn't get in the way of that. Right. Right. And so. So as I understand it, if it's below 2,000 square feet and allowed by right, it's just done. Go. Right. If it's over 2,000 square feet, even if it is a ra allowed by right, it has to come through administrative review. Well, right now it comes to us. Right. And so that's, so I'm saying if. Instead of just saying, if it's over 2,000 square feet, it goes to to staff review. I'm saying if it's a, if it's over 2,000 square feet and allowed by right, it goes to staff review. If it's over 2,000 square feet and not allowed by right, then it comes to us. 
Right. But so if it's not allowed by right, then it's special permit, and oh, that right. would still so come. And that's going to come right. anyway, right? right. Yeah. yeah. That's the part that, like, what function is? So then, yeah. So what function is the two thousand square feet playing? I guess. I guess that's the part I don't. Well, the two thousand square feet was that. That starts to be a project where you might need a little more parking, and maybe the scale of it might require some kind of landscaping, and all of those things are spelled out in the site plan section, but they're pretty. They're pretty. Um, they're, the standards are all written down, so it's an, there's not a, there's a, not as much of a judgment call um, because you have to meet X, Y, and Z. And over the years, those standards have gotten more and more specific. So um, having someone come through to the planning board to meet all the things that are spelled out anyway may not make so much sense if staff can look at it and say, Oh yeah, check, 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 and maybe you need to adjust this over here to make more <coughs> sense. Um, the 5,000 square feet is obviously a bigger, it's a bigger project. Um, also might mean, well, would in most cases mean more parking, and so what are those impacts, where's the parking located, might then have greater impacts to a variety of abutting parcels. Mm -hmm. So that would give an opportunity for the board to consider, you know, those comments from the public. Depends on what district it's in? It depends on what, uh, well, the, the square footage threshold is um, regardless of the district. But there are some other uses right. that are have triggers depending on the district. Right. Mm -hmm. So for parking, you picked 20 as the as the high end, and yet if you go to the parking table, it's um, 500 square feet is is the metric for. Uh, so in the commercial district, it's one per 300 square feet, unless you're in town. Town and then that's we've gotten rid of a lot of the parking, but in right. some of the commercial districts, it's one space per 500 square feet. So that would have led me to think you were capping it at 10 if we were just using that rule of thumb, and we went to 20 for parking. Right. So that's one of the other changes proposed is saying, well, maybe it doesn't need to come to planning board until you hit that 20. Um, that's a pretty threshold. big number for parking. Is my is my initial okay. reaction? Um, you're thinking apartments that have two people in them, each of whom has a car. Is that the? Well, this could be again. This could be residential or commercial. So industrial, office, retail, or residential doesn't speak to the use. Mm -hmm. It's just if you're creating, if you're adding. 20 well as it stands now if you're adding 10 is the current threshold then that's considered a major project and then goes to planning board for major review in this case we're not calling it major anymore it would just be comes to planning board versus going to staff mm -hmm. so um, you know we looked at 20 again based on the consultants report about what are some bigger thresholds but if you think about so our maximum has typically been in on the residential side no more than two parking spaces per unit mm -hmm. so this would be four units mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. if we're saying that four units is allowed by right let's say in the URC district but because someone's going to provide Oh, is it? No, I had my math wrong. <laughs> um, so I was thinking I had to multiply that by four. I'm sorry. Um, so it's for 10 units, I mean, 10 spaces, sorry, that's five units. I mean, yeah, you are starting to get maybe, maybe beyond five units is something, you know, beyond six definitely trigger special permit anyway now in the urban residential C because we have that threshold of if you're building six units it's site plan mm -hmm. if you're building seven or more mm -hmm. it's special That's permit perfect. so you're going to see something at seven and more anyway so maybe if you want to tie so if we look at that as the marker okay. then tie that's 14. Or 14 right. instead yeah. of 20. Right. I just think we're not I mean it's going to be an odd project that's going to fit into Right. administrative approval with 20 parking places and not right. kick something yeah. else right. up. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to think too, if, <clears throat> if we're trying to clean this up and make it more user friendly for developers, if I'm a developer with a 3,000 square foot allowed by right to housing unit development, 
how do I know or would I know when I submit that it's that staff review can do it on their own and send it back or that it, they you may send it forward to the full board surely they would have called but if the whole effort is to make this clearer it's still not clear at that very first step if I submit it you're hoping that it doesn't go through the board but you don't know you know so how right. well I mean it's sort of I guess it's comparable to now which someone may not assume like they'll look and they say oh I'm allowed to do three family in URB but then buried in the text it says oh by the way anything over 2,000 square feet is site plan so that's the per that's the issue now someone doesn't know until they actually show up with their zoning permit right, but so but we're trying to so, make that better right so um, I think that um, well, one of the notations that we've done in the table, and we could make it, we could amend that, um, is to say that there are other triggers that, you know, in the site plan column where it says if it's checked that you need site plan by the planning board, if there are other, well, now in the residential districts, there's sort of a table of things that require site plan, and it also says you also need site plan for X, Y, and Z, project C, section 11. So we could clean that language up and, and indicate that, um, you know, administrative site plan is required for construction over, you know, 2,000 square feet and spell it out clearly. In, in the table? table in the city, or just yeah. to give a heads up so that we're trying to streamline things here and things are better. You've got a 3,000 square foot allowed by right. Everything should go well. But heads up, uh, staff may forward this on to full board review for extenuating circumstances or something like a shared driveway or whatever it might be <coughs> and so that they might the indication is your chances are good but it's not a hundred percent which is I think the message we're trying to send right but I think those things I also would say that we want to make sure all of those things are written down so it's yeah. not right I show up to staff and staff all say, oh by the way we don't like your project we're gonna send you to the planning board but instead they would look at the text and say okay I'm definitely in staff level review or I'm definitely at planning. Yeah I mean that right. I remember the one guy that's what he said it's not necessarily that it's one there but it's the uncertainty of right. knowing right. you know how yeah. do I plan for I up that. Against it could be this but it might be that. Right. You know I, I think yeah like you said if it's a little more definitive then. Yeah I mean not, that's the goal is to say okay here are all the here are the list of projects that definitely need additional review you can't just get your building permit you need to make sure that the site functions and it's going to be done at the staff level. And then here are the other projects that we still encourage and we want in the city, but it needs planning board review because it's at a different scale. Um, sorry to not get off this kick, but it's, it would seem to be to, to a Joe public, if you grab them off the street and, and you s try to explain, you know, sometimes we at the planning board, we get these things that are called uh, approval not required, but we still have to approve them. Right. They say, what's that? That doesn't make any sense. And here you'd say, You've got a 3,000 square foot development. It's allowed by right, but you might have to have a hearing in full of the full board. And you'd say, well, that doesn't make sense. Allowed by right means I don't have to go in front of anybody. So how, how, how do you reconcile that to, to that extent? Maybe it's the story of the abutters. So if, if planning office knows there's going to be a brouhaha and that really th that project should go through a public vetting, then I think it should. I agree, but to Carolyn's point, it should be clear mm -hmm. right. Right. when, when who, the developer reads the chart or reads the text that uh, this is a trigger and it's, staff, it's not going to stop at staff level because if we leave it at the discretion of staff and one time they say, well, I think there's going to be a brouhaha here and the next time, for whatever reason, they, they don't think there will be. That can't then that's a problem. Right. Then the people are going to say, why did this person have to go and, and mine or theirs was accepted? And, and, and it seems like just the fact that there might be a brouhaha is not, I mean, that can't be the reason. No, you know, no, no, no. You know, right. You can't, you know, you can't, oh, well, you meet everything, but we think that a lot of people are going to, you know, we, it's right. got to be, you know, it's got to be statute. Or, well, I think or, if we take a step back, the, the whole idea behind site plan review anyway is um, not so much about the use, but how the use functions on the site and how everything is organized on the site. So, um, you know, maybe that could be clarified in this text too to say we still have by right, meaning your use is allowed, 
but because you're at this scale, we need to look at these 10 things and we can do that at staff level, but once you get to this other size and scale, there, um, you know, there's stormwater and traffic mitigation and um, other site issues that need to have the planning board vetting. So it's not about, again, it goes back to it's not about the use, but it just means that um, more people get to look at it and s make sure that the site functions the way the ordinance is intended to have sites function. And, and that trigger is just going to be, what was the lower threshold that we're going to move it up to? Well, or, 2000 leave it at 2000. Okay. is already where it is. Right. And so that's already there. So we're basically just, um, in, to some degree, we're changing the, um, just the wording a little bit by saying instead of everything at 2000 going to planning board and then it's divided at that point, small, large, mm -hmm. we're gonna take the small and just say that staff and keep the big with the planning board. So we say to the, sorry John, no, say to the public under two, allowed by right, have at it. Over five, that site plan review by the board. Two to five, if it's allowed by right, staff review, and then it's just the, I, I, I don't know how to clarify staff review maybe, but if these things, these boxes aren't checked, then it's gotta go to the. No, I don't think it would ever, the only way that it would go transfer from staff review to planning board is if the staff review got appealed that's the way this is written so if you're in the staff review as it's in it. defined yeah. in this you're going to stay on that path if you get to the end of the path and in a but and, and we still have a process for notifying neighbors of the the hearing which would take place during the day in our offices and it would be you know not three weeks out notice or whatever you know we'd send i think we said 14 days notice mm -hmm. or something um then someone says you know what i don't I don't like what staff did. I want to appeal it. The appeal then would come to the board. Okay. So that's the only time that you would get the um, the permits it's, that were on this path okay. right. come over to your All path. Right, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. Did you have something? Yeah. I was gonna say, what if the term use by right instead of by right, which sounds like sort of everything? Um, yeah. You know. And I ha let me just pull up the. Um, Actually, what the code it's a table of uses. I think, think 5.2. I agree. I mean, for people who know yeah. zoning, you, you know what that means by right. But people who don't, who just want to build a two-family house, by I mean, allowed by right, seem to indicate allowed by right. But the use is allowed by right. Well, that's what I'm but saying. The size if you, would if trigger, you're clear about right. the fact that what's allowed is, yeah, you can put a house in here, but there are limitations as to how and why and when and where and the rest of it. So, I mean, it would be clear, it would be nice if on the top of the chart it said, the use is allowed by right, under two, you're good, between 2,000 and 5,000, please see staff, over 5,000, you're going to see the board. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but what, would, what would then the circumstance be if the use is allowed, but the use is what's causing the brouhaha? I mean, I guess that that's, is not that's just, just, you know, right? Well, that's if how. It's, well, if it's a well, use is allowed, I, I mean, I guess that's the part that. Well, but technically, even if it comes to the planning board, the planning board can't say we don't like this use. Right. You can say we don't like this use because of the way that you've um, designed it on this parcel. The use is okay, but go back to design. So technically, all of those now that fall under site plan. The board can't deny it because they don't like right. the use. Right. And so uh, yeah, that's very hard sometimes right. for neighbors to, for abutters who come in and have a, you know, significant concerns about a project to say, well, wait a second, it's coming from the planning board. Why can't you turn it down? Right, right, <laughs> right. right. But the idea is, well, we want these lists of things to be <clears throat> allowed in these neighborhoods or districts and we really just want to make sure they're functioning right. So give us <coughs> feedback on what's not going to work with this and, you know, we can put permit conditions on it. But you can't prevent it from... Right. right. Okay. And I, because the table is called table of use requirements, I like Anne's suggestion mm -hmm. of by right use. Or use, use is allowed. Use is allowed, allowed by right. Well, I'm, I'm just looking now to see if... Um, 
if that's the way we've got, um, so I'm just going to take these other ones I have here. Um, because some of it also is just sort of long standing. Let's see this. Um, so table of use and dimensional regulations. Mm -hmm. Stop messing with long standing, you forget. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now the way we've set up, this is just our latest residential district. It does say in the table we've got first got uses allowed by right, but the the header is URB uses allowed. And then the next category is site plan approval required for the following. And then special permit approval required for the following uses by planning board unless otherwise noted. So you're saying um, under this first section, let's just as an example, uses allowed by right is too confusing. Is that what you're saying or no? That it no, should I mean, be no, just like uses that's allowed. Right. No. No, no, that's by right. That's all right. Yeah, that's good. Okay. That's fine. Well, we were talking about a table that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So this is in the narrative, I guess, on the table, where we tried to. Right. So the other problem is this is the newer format where we've yeah. got, let's say, I'm going to go up here to general industrial. Um, so here's where we started out with a, mat more of a matrix where it says site plan approval required by planning board. But then on the left hand side, so it says uses use allowed, allowed by, by right, right. Yeah, okay. or by right unless <clears throat> otherwise right. noted. So maybe it's actually in these other ones that we need to yeah. be more clear about that. Um, we're going to have to change this anyway because if we're distinguishing between staff level right. and right. planning board, we're going to have to modify each of these other tables. Mm -hmm. I have a notification question. Uh -huh. um, I think this is all great. I, mean, I have a, a bunch of little notes, but just in terms of like any hesitation or wanting to be cautious on our part and knowing that there are all these projects between two and 5,000 that we won't see, is there any scenario where members of the planning board could also be automatically included as a butters so that we're at least getting notification of these and that way like, not that we would necessarily weigh in, but I mean, is that legal to do to no also notify planning board with those projects, or would we get some kind of like staff report before the fact, or would it come after the fact that, like, um, just like what sort of like check is there for us to remain involved to in some way that would be like the easiest for you guys without adding a ton of burden? Like, do can we just get on the mailing list so that we're also seeing them, and then it's incumbent on us to you know, just kind of keep track of it if we wanted to weigh in on something? I don't think we're allowed to weigh in, though, without being in the group. The open meeting will Well, yeah. okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that would create some problems, but okay. also it goes back to that gray area. What are we trying to say? You know, are we really saying this is a staff level review or are we saying it's planning board review? Right. But we did, I, at the last meeting, I think Mark suggested that it would be beneficial for the board to be kept apprised of yes. all the projects that right. come through at the staff level. So, I mean, I think I added this iteration that, um, you know, as part of the process that the planning board would receive monthly reports on all the permits that have been issued in the previous month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. With a short description. That, that's in this version? I no. think I added Because I made the same note test did yeah. on yeah. page three. After the fact, not before. Right. Oh, right, right. Okay. Right, but that's the whole point of it. Yeah, yeah, you would know, and then, of course, you would know if someone were appealing. Appeal, yeah. Say, oh, yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. That came up in the... Well, you'd have an understanding of what's been going th right. through the right. process and as well. See a, an alarming spike in a certain type of right. development. Mm -hmm. then. Right. One, one thing we <clears throat> talked about last time was the concern before when this issue was raised was that site plan, like you said, is very, it's kind of very black and white. We really don't, if somebody meets all the setbacks and everything, it's really not uh, a lot for us to say. But that informal initial review, um, what was I trying to say? Or maybe that was backwards. If, if, 
if it got approved at site plan, then it's not going to, I guess that was a dual thing. If it got, if we saw that uh, initial site plan review and we took that away from us and went right to special permit, if it was a, a double thing. Um, right, well actually, so I'm not sure if this is getting at what you're saying, but sometimes we require site plan and special, special permit. permit. Right. And so all of those ones that are special permit, everything is just gonna come, would still come to the planning board because at that point, it's more um, of a, um, it's, it's like a significant project. Like. Right, but it, you also have the ability to, um, it's a judgment call, so you all have the ability to um, deny a project um, at that point if, this, if it's a special permit. I think I was thinking of that because the, when it's a double, when they have to do both, and there was a concern by some developers voiced about developing a, not a full set of site plan, but oh, right, you know, right, right. going to a certain level of effort to get the site plan information out if, if the special permit's not gonna get approved. So can we do special permit first, site right. plan second? Right. And my concern was if, if, you, if you're past the special permit phase, will never ever reject a, a site plan because it's too right. black and white. And right. never having the opportunity at the beginning to see right. anything about it, that right. made me feel hesitant. Yeah, so we did have that kind of as sort of a separate permitting piece that if, um, you know, knowing that you need a site plan, you want to get a re the applicants might want to get, and that was one of the other recommendations, applicants might want to get a read on whether or not the use is even you know, viable, does it make sense to spend tens of, tens of thousands of dollars on engineering if the board's just gonna say no to the use anyway. Um, that's, that piece is not in this, but it is something, I thought you all um, would be, had said that you wanted to see language about sort of the elements that we'd include in sort of a minimal site plan submittal. Right. Um, right that comes along with a special permit that doesn't necessarily trigger the full-blown engineered plans. So we haven't undertaken that okay, that's what I was um, okay. yet. Okay. Right. Can we just go, is it okay for us to just keep going through? Okay. This is so wonky and so potentially small. What page? But on page two, or at least my printed out page two, I, the building commissioner may not issue any building or zoning permits. Is this a may not or a shall not? And if you may not, is there any, are there teeth to that? Is there an or else or a? Uh, where, oh, why don't you? Which paragraph? The uh, requirements. Uh, there's numbers. Under yeah. which number? Uh, 350.11.4G, under G, planned business project. Well, it's worded in the first paragraph. <coughs> Oh, this okay. is where actually, um, I think. I'm sorry, let me just find it here. On the printed page we've got, it's the top of page two. Oh, okay. You've got a yeah, top of page two. Yeah. Well, the really top. Yeah, and two sheets per page, yeah, exactly. double sided. It's like right. ridiculous. Exactly. I'm, like, mm -hmm. no, no, I'm no, saving right. paper. I guess that. We're trying. <laughs> I, know I, think I, think I think that's what <laughs> like, they are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. Right. It's actually right under requirements, the next paragraph. So 11.4. Right. These requirements are superimposed over any other requirements. Is there any? Building commissioner yeah. may not issue any building or zoning permits for any project identified above until the site plan has been approved by staff or the planning board. Right. Um, well, it should be shall, okay. if that's what you're, that's yeah. What that's asking. my question, yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna let her get away with that one without getting one the same <laughs> way. <laughs> I just, you know, like I read so many federal documents, May is so like, eh, yeah, maybe. Exactly. Shall is, <clears throat> you know. On uh, the first page in, uh, 11.2 G. I think there's a require missing there. Any project that is requesting a provision of the zoning that is allowed only when site plan approval and which is not otherwise 
which is not otherwise a planning board approval? No. I withdraw. Um, oh, that's C, right? That should it's be C. It's D, but it's just, it's an awkward read, but well, that's why. Well, didn't we get rid of C? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it will be C. So. Um, so this is yeah. overall, here are the projects that require it's administrative site plan yeah. approval. And so D is like supposed to be any project mm -hmm. that's in that table of use mm -hmm. where the checkbox says site plan. So, and that is not otherwise a planning board approval. Right. It, everything else, so if it's checked and it doesn't say, okay. it doesn't also trigger, does that? Should, I mean, should that just read in which does not otherwise require a planning board site plan approval? Yeah, we can do that. Just so it's, it's fine. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yep. And since we're in that section, mm -hmm. are we sticking with six to 20 parking spaces or are we dropping that? Are you going to tie that into the. Like um, I heard 14. So what about 14? That sounds good. So 13. For anything staff. that seems consistent with what we've already yeah. outlined yeah. somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. So 13, I, I put up here, thir I don't know if you can see it, it's still pretty, I'll make it bigger. 13 for uh, up to 13 under staff, and then 14 and over for planning board. So I made it right here. That's great. What was the basis for that again? Between a couple numbers? Well, no, it's the total number of units. So in the urban residential C district, you could do, um, you know, a four unit by right. At the most, it would require um, two parking spaces per. So that was going so up to the seven. It was going up six to six, six sorry. Right. 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 Seven would require 14, 14 or more. And seven's a special permit trigger anyway. I have another. Hey, wonky. <laughs> on page three, or somewhere on page three, is there any value to calling out, um, let's see, little i, existing and proposed landscaping, including trees and other plantings? Is there any need to explicitly say designation of specimen trees by the tree warden or like acknowledge anything about specimen trees? This is not my bailiwick. I just it just always um, comes up, it so I'm like it seems to come up. So I'm like I just uh, noticed that that's not a phrase that appears, and so do we need to? Here's Lily's tree ordinance right here. <laughs> <laughs> like let's not pull that out. Because <laughs> there's one that's in front of city council, so I don't okay. I don't want to look at that one. <laughs> Great. Um, and I don't know why that's still in there. <laughs> Great. Um, so garbage can here. Yeah. Uh, it sits here usually. Under existing and proposed landscaping, including trees and other plantings, including size and type of plantings. So I mean, it would obviously be like included in there just by inference, but I'm just wondering if, if so the documents, if we want somebody to actually be like cognizant of the fact that we have these specimen trees and that and they're special. Me, and tell me again what a specimen tree is. It, it was 20 inches at breast height diameter, right? Or no? What's the right? So it, there are significant trees. Significant trees. Um, right, right. Sorry. And um, I knew it was an S. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's a good. Point. Sorry. Let me just pull up the. Um, yeah, four and a half feet. I'm gonna pull up the tree. Tree ornament. Twenty. Tell you what. Oh, okay. I don't interact with trees hardly at all anymore. <laughs> I seriously, I mean, it's just like weird. I'm just realizing this. Like we don't, you know, we really don't have trees on our site, and I walk through town and then I walk home and I'm like, wow, <laughs> I just don't interact with trees anymore. You need to take a, take a hike, I know. <laughs> so, um, so if I can't find it now, I'll just put that a note to make sure that they're consistent there. If there's not language in the existing, I mean, the other thing that would be beneficial would be if the language in the proposed tree ordinance is working its way through. Yeah. Um, somehow contradicts some of the new language we're proposing here, there's still an opportunity to modify that before yeah. it gets adopted. Cool. But um, not to throw a twist in this, but if 
this is telling them what that needs to be on the application, the, mm -hmm. what the company by site plan drawing, supporting documentation. So if it is an existing tree that they choose to keep, then it may not be uh, off our tree list. It may not be a specimen tree. That just be, may be a tree they choose to keep. So just. Right. Yeah. I think more, I, I was it's hearing more that if you were, right. if there was a yeah. plan to eliminate. Right. And then that tr that in and of itself triggers planning board review mm -hmm. right. on that end. Yep. Can I give you my last one? Yeah. Uh, my last one was just at uh, pages five and six. There's reference to the um, the traffic mitigation offsets uh -huh. and. Um, there's any medical marijuana project, regardless of the district. Mm -hmm. But then under project type for figuring out peak hour trips, there's two references. You know, medical marijuana dispensary and medical marijuana growing and processing are different right. and have different metrics. Right. So is that confusing for someone who, because the it's two thousand dollars per peak trip, but figuring out how many peak trips you have is well, different path. Yeah, so this is the way it is for every use. So you okay. figure out what the per peak trip impact is and then how much we assume, how many peak trips we assume based on your square footage. So there are two. You, yeah, it's a two-step process to determine what your okay. impact is. Okay, so if your medical... And it's either, it's for any use, not just that. But they're two different. I mean, so if you're a grow facility okay. versus a retail outlet... Got it you're going to have a different impact and that's why they're right, right, of course okay but regardless of which one of those it's still going to be two thousand dollars per peak trip right okay so along and that, i didn't say it <coughs> along that same line though um on page four uh in the middle of the page where it's number three for estimated daily and peak hour vehicle trips yeah. um would you object to me putting in ite estimates i mean estimates by you know, they'll vary greatly and pick all sorts of sources. Well, so b that's the, um, we have have that caveat um, under the mitigation requirement, actually, that says here are the assumed trips for these okay. uses, unless you use another metric that's approved, that, you know, um, okay. is an alternative metric. Um, I have a question going back to the the existing landscaping, significant trees. So in this scenario, if we go back to the 3,000 square foot development that's allowed by right, goes for staff review, but in that, I have a 30 inch existing tree in the middle of my yard that I want to chop down. Is that a staff reviewable thing or is that a trigger that, I mean, what, it just, um, that's what I want to pull up. I think that's planning board because under the tree ordinance that's going forward, I think it clearly says planning board approval okay. to cut down a tree. A significant uh, tree. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't that's offer them the option to do the planting of other trees to equate for that? Um, I think it's still planning board review, but okay. that's why I want to pull it up. So if I uh, just carrying that through, if I have a 1,900 square foot development allowed by right with that same 30 inch significant tree, I could cut it down. No, because the tree ordinance is going through, so it's a separate, almost okay. a standalone thing. Okay. If you're doing, um, you know, if you're if you're removing significant trees. No matter what you're... Even if you weren't building, you'd be in trouble. Wow. How do you know that? How, how well, would, how actually, would have... um, that's why I'm going to pull up the language, because I think that got changed. Because um, wasn't, wasn't that come to... up we talked about the first time about, I'm, you know, I'm a property owner, I have right. three, I just want to cut it down, you know, I right. have a son in my yard or something. I mean, right. solar. Right. 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 Yeah. Right, right. And you can do that. As long as you don't do it two, is it within two years of the of a project. Of a project. Yeah. So you really have to think far ahead. Well, actually, it got reduced to 12 months. That's part of the thing that got changed that's now. I mean, it hasn't been changed. It's just that's the working draft mm -hmm. now as it's making its way through is to um, narrow that um, window to 12 months. Um, I think I said sneaky. Yeah. yeah. 
Are you still looking for something or the tree? The tree. I'm still looking for the tree, but you guys can. Um, under the, uh, it's on page four, the two, the um, minimizing traffic safety impacts. Mm -hmm. The encouraging flexible hours and work weeks seems like a really lame, unenforced. I took out encouraging in both of those. Well, I would just, and you, and you can't require that for, I mean, that's that's an occupant's decision. It's not the building or the, the tenant, the owner of the building. I think that just needs to come out. Only because I'd hate to have somebody come through and say, well, I, I'm, rec I'm encouraging that for my, well, yeah, but there's no teeth at all in that. <coughs> If they could show you, though, that they were running shifts and they didn't have 24 people there at once, they had 12 and 12, would you care? I wouldn't care because they might be gone in two years and somebody else comes in and... Yeah. Um, I, I took so you're suggesting the elimination of item two and three? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or I guess either no. make them enforceable three, or, or three, though, is get rid of three is good. I just think yeah. two. Yeah, I think it really okay. comes okay. down to yeah. physical okay. versus yeah. operational. Well, and I edited three to say pedestrian and bicycle facilities providing access to the site. So I actually wanted it to be something you could count or, okay. or measure yeah. facilities. Can I ask something that I just couldn't get the reference right on? Um, on five, the first paragraph is C, and it ends with, in the plan required by subsection B2 above. The, the B2 I could find was about site plan at scale one inch equals 40 feet, so I can't believe that's. Okay, say that again, sorry. This, this is a call, pointing back somewhere. Uh -huh. And I don't see that it, I can't figure out the logic of the pointing back. Because I go to B. Oh, it's this three, maybe I should say uh, B2. Okay, three B2. Okay, okay. thanks. So I can add that. Is 3B2 the encouraging flexible hours and work week? Yeah. The one that Detail we just took away? Traffic site. <laughs> Hold on a second. Detailed assessment. In, in the whole paragraph itself, B2 is right on the front, on page the three, front and it says site plans at a scale, so it's not that B2. It's proposed mitigation, so a plan to minimize, so it really should be B, I think, 3B, okay. as opposed to B2. Oh, okay. okay, that's a good catch, thanks. Are these changes by staff based on the comments from that study that was done, or are these were these were the changes initiated by? Did did they review the zoning and propose changes, and your staff's cleaning them up, cleaning it up? No, they didn't get into the weeds that okay. far. They just okay. gave general just comments. General. You right. know, that they, they didn't go in to analyze what would be a good. I mean, they actually suggested a higher threshold for any um even in staff review right. um, yeah um but uh, beyond that they didn't get into the nitty-gritty um okay. and they pointed out some inconsistencies here and there but their charge wasn't to go in right. and create edit. A draft right. text or edit well and i think it's a prudent position to for for us to, i don't want to call it drag our feet but not just take that Completely, I think, oh, I agree. I think what we're I agree. doing is is a, a, a move in that direction. Right. Carolyn, what's the process? Like, we're not formally. Are we formally voting to recommend that staff adopt these changes, or what's our like? So this this hasn't gone anyway. This has been discussion. So if you feel comfortable with this version, then the next step would be. Um, it's for us to put it into a document that's submitted to City Council by Planning Board sponsorship. Um, well, we should vote on that for that to happen. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. 
do we need to see the final version to vote that in, or are we going to? I think that's up to us. If, yeah, if you to wanted you. to, or if you were comfortable with it, that would be just a sort of a voice vote. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you? Are, do you feel like we're a complete group tonight? I mean, we're a little on the thin side, but. Yeah. I mean, it, if I weren't here, I probably would want to see the final one rather than. Yeah. Carolyn, what about the one that I made a comment to you about in two? B2 having to do with the roads. Um, what page? Again? Oh, I'm sorry. Page oh, five. I made that actually in my printed version and it's on the screen. Well, so, there's nothing on that screen that's of any use. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it bigger. So, Anne's comment, which um, on page five, mm -hmm. item two, it's at the bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. Where it says the project, including any concurrent road improvements, will not decrease the level of service of all area, and it says city and state roads or intersections. So, um, she pointed out the fact that she didn't really that that didn't really make sense, or w were we leaving out something? So I think the intent was public street. So we're not we're not looking at level. We're not demanding a review of level of service for private streets or driveways or anything. It's really meant to be city and state streets. So. Um, uh, we talked about deleting city and state and just putting public. Yeah. That's fine. Um, right above that in number one, I went and looked up 58.6 and that, just for clarity, that would allow you to reduce the parking requirements 20% from the table of off-street parking? Yes, by site plan. That's right. And anything over 20% is a special permit. So that would come to the planning board anyway. Um, on the next page, we just want to cover this because it, it should get covered. The traffic mitigation funds are, are the result of our planning work. And, and they have not historically gone to TPC. That group didn't actually, they, they may or may not have been able to get to those funds. The mayor has actually taken some money and, and, and aggregated it together and given that committee some working room to try to fix traffic calming. Uh -huh. I think it came out of capital improvements, didn't it, Mark? I know it was discussed, yeah. So um, I'm just wondering, what, what we've done with this edit is we've taken their consideration out of it uh, what number, what page? Six. Yeah. And that edited part out. The deleted portion of the removed payment in the top paragraph. It's not taken out. It's whether or not it's an appropriate place for this to be. Okay. So the money, all in order to spend money, it has to go through a committee. But it doesn't. We don't have to spell out the administrative dealings with how that money is spent in the code, and yeah. that's the only reason why. I, that, I just I wanted to visit it because yeah. I knew there were funds going to them, and yeah. I I knew we had taken it out, and I'm fine with that. I just yeah. wanted to make sure it wasn't. The idea is, and that we're not going to we're eliminating them as the body that right. makes recommendations about that. It's just yeah, so that it's not code. The it's, applicant doesn't need to know that how yeah. how things are. Yeah, right. okay. From there on, it's very little and it's right. punctuary. Yeah. So just going back to the tree um, ordinance, um, it, it is, I, and I, it, this actually is going back for a public hearing in front of city council, so this is good to good timing to sort of re-evaluate um, this. But um, it only goes to the planning board if a project is triggered anyway, site plan review. So um, no person shall remove any significant tree associated with any site plan approval or any other zoning relief without a site plan from the planning board. So this to me, I would interpret that to mean even if there was an administrative site plan, the fact that you're taking a significant tree means it bumps you up right. to the full board because it's about any zoning relief. So it, even if it goes, to, if it's a project requiring a zoning board approval, mm -hmm. it also would require a planning board. So just for the fact that you're taking a significant, a significant tree. tree. So if, if I'm under 2,000 square feet allowed by right, and I've got that 30-inch uh, 
was going to say TV uh, <laughs> tree. Uh, we can you can cut it down without. Okay. okay. Can I go out on a limb here and ask if that's what we really want to do? <laughs> Did you mean to be yeah, funny? Say, say that, yeah. If you had to use that phrase, would we say yeah, okay. <laughs> that a tree can stop a project? I, no, I just, that's what that's what. No, it. under two thousand, it can if it's allowed. That's by what right. Mark's saying. If you're just doing your own project, if you're expanding, I mean, that was the whole point. Is right. let's say you have a single-family house and you're you're putting on an addition mm -hmm. or a garage mm -hmm. or whatever else. That doesn't require any relief from zoning. No matter you how big can just do is. that. And then, oh, there's a tree in the way of this garage that I'm planning, so I'm going to cut it down. That's not triggered by this because you're not doing a full-scale development plan that also I need a building need permit something instead of a site plan. Yeah. And that's so, um, and that was by design. I think city councilors didn't want to, you know, Okay. interfere with every single project but the ones that and, and to a certain extent the timing for the 12 month or 18 month thing is to say okay people who are really doing big site plan projects they're thinking that far ahead they, it takes them that long to design a project anyway so um, we would hate to have someone go in buy a piece of property and say you know what, before I design anything I'm just going to clear cut so I can think better. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, that's that Hadley question over there by the oh, new. Oh, the, the pride. Well, that's exactly yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. That's yeah. precisely right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come okay. in and bulldoze it down, and then let's talk. Right. Mm -hmm. So okay. anyway, okay. That I think that um, there probably isn't any need to change that because right. this would just automatically bump it up to the full board. Okay. Um, one last comment, and it's more in your note section at the very end. Um, we've got conceptual site plan, and that sounds like language that was left over from the intermediate. I don't even know what you're doing with that, but I just... Oh, you know, this goes back to Mark's question, so I haven't looked at this, all the details, in just takes a couple of weeks. So I can get <laughs> <laughs> you were right. So I apologize. Um, so 10.1 is the special permit section. It's not site plan. Right. So... Um, this is that whole thing about the application for special permit shall include a conceptual site plan that provides enough information for the board or permitting grant, granting authority to determine the impact of the use. Um, and so this is where you get at coming before the board to get preliminary review for the special permit use without fully engineered plan. I, I just thought we could do something safer than say conceptual, you know, a mm -hmm. um, okay. or, um, preliminary. Uh, yeah, site plan of limited detail or mm -hmm. uh, well, how about just seeing a, a site plan that includes at a minimum the minimum the following and just list right. it out. Well, and, and it that that is the following, so okay, so just delete conceptual. Yeah. Okay. So in in the there's some, there's something there's something about uh, project yeah. <laughs> in the two to five thousand square foot uh, parameter. Well, I was gonna say if could this could this preliminary site plan go to staff level review, and the board never sees it if along with this it's it's tied into a special permit or this would always come in from the yeah so this is under the special permit section so, so if i already know i need a special permit but i'm a little uncertain whether um it's going to be acceptable as a use that special permit automatically goes to planning board so this would not be a staff level right. review okay because that was the one we're, t we're talking about eliminating at one point that conceptual site plan just because or no not the conceptual the full-blown site plan because that was right burdensome. So this would do that this right. would be, allow someone to come to the planning board and say mm -hmm. okay at a minimum i'm showing you where my building's going right. to be the scale right. orientation blah 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 and here's my use what do you think about this right mm -hmm. does it make sense to just be more explicit about what they don't have to do like in saying if we're taking out the word conceptual and we're not using draft or preliminary and we're just saying it has to include this, this, and this, I mean, isn't the purpose that we're trying to say you don't have to actually have it signed by a registered engineer and you don't have to do these very specific things? Like for someone 
would it be helpful for somebody to read that and understand that this is easier to do than a real site plan? It's a riskier list to come up with. It is. Right. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. The other thing is you also, they might come to the hearing, you might say, well, I want to see, you might say you want to see something else, and if it's in the list of exclusions, right. then, you know, maybe you're, because there may be a situation where, in fact, you want to see at least preliminarily where that sewer line's going to, you know, if it's got to, for whatever reason. So we leave it to the applicant to figure out how drafty they can get away with being. Right, and mm -hmm. the board, I mean, this still gives you the um, flexibility to say, you know, not enough information, we can't say yay or nay. Mm -hmm. Go back and do your full plans, um, and we'll tell you. Then they'll have to okay. decide if they want to. Right. Right. That's right. right. Okay. So one other way step back, but when you are having an administrative review meeting upstairs, and you have sent out a butters are, are you holding a public hearing? Um, yes. Because I think that if that is happening, even in name only, that it's mm -hmm. better to put that in this somewhere that says, that you've sent out a butter's notices and we haven't really said why, it's because they can come show up and get your attention at that meeting. So I think we ought to say there is a, there is a public process involved in administrative review. Right. Yes. Yes. Doesn't it say notice of the date and time of review? Right, so under 11.4 requirements, this is page two. Um, the You're going to read me just what I said, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Site plan shall be conducted by the Director of Office of Planning and Sustainability or its uh, designee. Notice of the date, time, and review shall be mailed to the abutters within 300 feet of the subject parcel at least seven days ahead of the review hearing. Notice of decision shall be mailed to abutters within 300 feet. Appeals shall be, so public, yeah. so review hearing. Uh, I'm holding on to I want a public hearing. No, that, <laughs> that, I did actually miss that, but I, yeah. Yeah. I think you'd do yourself a favor to put public hearing in there as a review hearing. That's Perhaps good. open to the public? I, I just. I, I think you read it knowing that you meant review hearing was a public option, but it just it didn't catch well, me. I could that add way. the word public. Public review is all I'm after. Yeah. yeah. Maybe just because I didn't want to seem like I hadn't processed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So notice of the date, time, and public review hearing shall be a review of. I could say seven days ahead of the public review hearing. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I feel like we've gone through it, mm -hmm. and that Carolyn okay. can clean it up and send it around everyone, mm -hmm. and then we can vote on it at the next opportunity. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good And word. I feel like we've we've made it better. I feel I feel yeah. good about the, the, yeah. the where we've gone with it. I mean, you know, I I remember the presentation and thinking, gee, that's. That's what somebody might come into town and tell us to do. I'm not sure that we're right, going to do it. Right, right, right. And so I think we've, we've really sort of judiciously looked at how we took their advice and applied it. I agree. That's a lot to look at, Carolyn. It was a good job. Yeah, now we all got ice cream. <laughs> 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 Pretty cool. Where? It is pretty cool. I know, everyone's like, what? <laughs> really? <laughs> Wait for the doors to bust open. And, yeah. so, it was our main bit of work for tonight, but there are a couple of other things. Uh, Carolyn sent around the minutes, which were brief, but right. Any comments to those? I move to approve the minutes of January 28th. Second. Second. <laughs> Just pick a name. All in favor? All opposed. Um, and then we have uh, an ANR for Olander Drive. Yes. So this is that single family house lot that you all approved by site plan up there. So they're just creating the same lot boundaries that were shown in the site plan. Um, it's that right at the end before the new transformation yep. mm -hmm. subdivision goes. So this is ready to go oh. forward. Probably going to start building this spring. It already has existing frontage on Olander, so there's no need to wait for the road construction. 
Motion to approve. Second. Um, move to approve. Second by John. All in favor? Done. The approval for the non approval. What's the other side? Subdivision approval not required. Okay. Stay morning. Can you do it? I, I, well, that's, I wasn't sure. I've all of a sudden got I can. I just did, I didn't know if I, okay. That would be great. Sure. Okay. It's a technical it, also, it also looks like the third one is dropping off. Oh, okay. So there'll be two to finish at 8.30. Who's, who's okay. coming forward? Thank you. Um, Clark, Clark and Optical Studio. And Optical Studio. Optical Clark's Studio. School. Edition. Yeah. What's this? It may or may not. Uh, I mean, this technical. is like. Yeah. I hope it's four stories tall. <laughs> <laughs> I said that in the microphone. It'll only look that way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's a very large sign. Move to adjourn. Are you, yep. you set Before we say yep. something yep. that we <laughs> Tess and Dan. <laughs> All in favor of adjourning. Meeting closed.